Ayan na, ayan na. Kamusta kayo mga kameta? Medyo nakakagulo na. Wait lang ha. I just had to double check something kanina kasi sobrang uh, medyo na-distract ako sa init. No? Grabe palang init pa rin dito sa, sa Singapore. Mas mainit pa sa Manila. Uh, hindi talaga pwede na naka-formal suit ka tapos paglabas mo. Wala, pawis ka agad. Bagyo boy. Eh. Hindi talaga sana sa init na yun. So sorry, medyo na-distract ako kanina. So I was not sure if... Uh, Tama yung mga sinasabi natin. So, we have to make sure about a couple of things. So, I try to run the data again. Of course, we, we talk about a number of things. Unang-una dito sa sitwasyon ni Brownlee. Uh, na, uh, nag-fail at least dun sa first test niya. Dun sa anti-doping uh, yung, yung regulations. Uh, sa Asia Games. Anong implication ito sa Pilipinas? Anong implication ito sa ating first gold in uh, what? 60... Ilang years na ba? 61 years, di ba? Nakalil mo, naka-ano pa tayo dyan, naka-gila shirt pa tayo, excited and all of that. Uh, I suppose you remember all of that. No, at the same time, kanina pinag-usapan din natin itong Nino Aquino Day and and, uh, and potential historical revisionism or, uh, you know, potential erasure of certain part of history. So, actually, to double check, I went through the calendar from 2015 during the time of Pinoy to Digong and then now to the time of Marcos Jr. It doesn't look like something significant change at least since the Gong time. No? So let's let's go back to that. So we have alam niyo na that we have to be very accurate about dun some basic facts natin. All right, dito mahirap na. Um although for me another thing na medyo concerning na dapat titingnan natin itong impact ng 'di ba? Ang dami nating pinag-usapan, Maharlika Fund, Maharlika Fund and then Confidential Fund. Now dun sa Confidential Fund biglang nang nakita ng sarili niyang uh, uh, issue dahil dun sa away si Digong inaway niya yung Speaker of the House. Pero balikan natin itong Maharlika Fund. I think uh, medyo kailangan natin ni follow up din 'yan. Mas concern ako dito because reports suggest that yung Development Bank of the Philippines, yung DBP na uh, isa sa mga essentially golden gooses no? for this Maharlika Fund or at least sources of funding for the Maharlika Fund potentially it's gonna breach itong capital requirements no? uh, after nag-contribute siya dun sa pool no? pag-usapan din natin yan mga kameta no? so very quickly going back to this first first of all uh, Nino Aquino Nino Aquino Day actually I had to run it again so in 2024 Nino Aquino Day is considered as uh, yeah yeah this is 2024 okay nasan ba yan wait yeah so it's a special non-working days no so this is Nino Aquino Day for 2024 so we have to be very accurate here about it so I went back to 2015 pano ni Pinoy uh Back then, the Nino Aquino Day was special day. So, looks like medyo less special ngayon. But, kung binalikan natin yung panahon ni Digong in 2022, Nino Aquino Day was special non-working day. Alright? So, special non-working day I ang Nino Aquino Day during Digong's time, during the time of Bombo Marcos, it's also a st- special non-working day. But actually, the difference is somewhere else. During Digong time, February 25, 2022 was special non-working day. Ito yung ETSA People Power Revolution. ETSA People Power Revolution Anniversary. Panahon ni Special Holiday, Panahon ni Aquino, Special Holiday at sa Revolution Anniversary, February 25, di ba? So, Panahon ni Aquino, Quarry Special Day, Panahon ni Digong, Special pa rin, but probably not as special, but it's a special non-working day. But next year, huh, wala yung ETSA. It's not in the regular holidays. It's not in the special non-working days. So, yun yung difference. 
hindi yung Nino Aquino Day, ang difference po is ETSA People Revolution Anniversary. Yun po yung parang nawala dito sa next year. Okay, so we have to be very, very accurate about this. Let me, sorry, hindi natin dala itong. Oh, so ito yung naging difference mga kameta. Parang nawala yung it's it's a people power revolution na meron kay Digong. If I'm not mistaken, meron din this year pero wala na next year. Wow, that's So yun yung maging difference from both Aquino and Duterte administration. Kahit sa special non-working days, walang etsa. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't see any uh, dito sa list na yan. So I'll, I'll send you the link dito sa bawat holiday. So, so mga kameta, some would say, hmm, major red flag yan. ba? Now, this is, how should I put it? This is quite weird because last year, during the Nino Aquino Day, sinabi ni Marco Jr. na less transcend, last, I mean this August, no? Sinabi niya na less transcend political barriers. No? So I stand united with all Filipinos worldwide in commemorating the Nino Aquino Day by standing for his beliefs and fighting for battles to deem right. He became example of being relentless and resolute for many. Okay, in our purposive quest for a more united, prosperous Philippines, let us transcend political barriers that hamper us from securing the comprehensive welfare and advancement of our beloved people. So in short, pano siya sabi niya, um, in fairness kay Nino Aquino, he's a special guy, etc. But at the same time, you know, let's try to not think much about the fact that he was against Marcos Senior, right? Parang ganun, or let's not parang make too much out of it. Parang may ganun na dating eh. Parang let's just agree to disagree. Yun ang dating sa akin. Yun ang dating sa akin no? So, next year, katulad nung time ni Digong, special non-working day pa rin yung Nino Aquino Day. But the difference is, nawala yung ETSA. People Power Revolt kumpara sa panahon ni Digong. Yun yung nawala. So I think that's that's where things are interesting and some would say tricky. So, si mga kameta, sinisabi ko nga, yung mga iba na hindi familiar dun sa konteksto ng mga sinisabi natin, mga konteksto ng mga analysis natin over the past years, yung mga hindi nagbabasa sa mga sinasulat natin, mga hindi uh, tinitingnan yung mga analysis natin, I think they perhaps misunderstood. They're, they're thinking na katulad tayo ng may ibang mga ek-ek na mga bloggers na taking one side to the other. Mukhang hindi na gets yung tao na medyo sarcastic tayo when we're talking about tatay taking on the other side. And, like, uh, wala tayong manok dyan, right? We're just looking at levels here. No? At kahapon, pinag-usapan natin what are the options forward uh, for for the opposition in terms of itong mga hidwa nangyari sa ruling coalition. So, as much as we binabantayan natin yung confidential fund, yung fate ng confidential fund, as much as binabantayan natin ang yung mga internal fault lines, etc., as much as natutuwa tayo dun sa tamang direction ng foreign policy natin sa ilalim ni Marcos Jr. administration, huwag natin kalimutan mga kamets. No? Huwag natin kalimutan mga kamets. Now, we should still carefully follow yung approach ng kasalukuyan na administrasyon dito sa kasaysayan natin particularly in terms of commemorating commemorating yung it's a people power revolution again throughout the year nakita natin on multiple occasions including the Nino Aquino day ang stance is unity transcending divisions of the past at the same time in fairness kay president marcos jr hindi na criticize or inatake in si Nino Aquino if, if anything parang na praise pa niya di ba Sabi niya, by standing for his beliefs and fighting for battles in Iraq, he became an example of being relentless resolute for many Filipinos. I mean, you cannot say it's a full 100% endorsement, but there's a kind of a compliment and appreciation recognition there. Next year, andun pa rin yung Nina Aquino Day, pero yung ETSA, nawala. Yun yung meron sa panahon ni Digong. It's a People Power Revolution Anniversary. February 25, 2022, meron. Obviously, meron yung panahon ni Ninoy. Nawala biglang ngayon. So, yun actually. So, so I, had, I had to double check this. Uh, kasi I had to compare calendar to calendar. Calendar, Pinoy 2015, uh, Digong 2022, and then 2024 for next year. Ano mangyari dito? So, oof, that's kind of interesting. That's kind of interesting. 
Hmm. Is this? Diba? Yun nga eh. In fact, ito yung interesting ah. Nung... Hindi I'm just double checking. Sorry. No, no, no. Hindi. hindi in fairness. So, special non-working days kay Digong, yung Etsa People Power Revolution. Similar sa Nino Aquino Day. Wala na. Wala na this year. Next year. Uh, so, si Digong ay mas totoo dun sa... Or at least mas respectful, ironically. Uh, or maybe not ironically, kasi hindi naman Marcos si Digong. But Digong, for everything he said against so-called Dilawan and all of his attacks sa mga Aquinos, andun pa rin sa special non-working days ang Etsa People Power Revolution until 2022. But next year, even if the president has talked about unity, agreeing to disagree, and let's just give the respect to Nino Aquino, I mean, yun nga eh, like, how can you say, uh, parang, how can you say na, you know, by, uh, na I stand united with all Philippines worldwide in commemorating the Nino Aquino Day uh, etong August, and then biglang the next year, na walang ETSA People Power Revolution commemoration, parang, I mean, I mean, one of the biggest contribution of Ninoy was eventually inspiring Etza. Of, of course, it didn't happen right away after the assassination. Yeah, but alam natin one way or another, the Etza revolution would not have had happened, or the color of the Etza revolution, literally and figuratively, would not have had been the same if not for Nino Aquino. So I just wondering what's going on here. So yeah. Parang wala eh. So, I'll post it down uh, sa baba para makita nyo on your own. So, kinumpara ko yung Digong time, Aquino time, and next year under BBM. So, clearly, there's a difference here. Okay? So, we had to double-check that para lang fair tayo. Okay? Now, uh, I think it's because February 25 next year daw, it will fall under parang Sunday daw or something like that. But, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There has to be a proper explanation here. There has to be proper explanation here. Uh, one second. Uh. Yeah, it will be a Sunday next year. February 25 will be a Sunday. But still, eh. eh yung, uh, the other one, there's another one dito naman sa special non-working days na I think Sunday, December 8th. But it's still on the list. So, yun. So, there has to be an explanation there. Bakit walang... It's, uh, yun nga eh, wait lang ah, double check, yeah, ay hindi, hindi, feast, no, 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 tama, December, December 8, 2024 is Sunday, and then andito yung isa, hmm, let's wait for the explanation, right, because, alam naman natin, given the context na another Marcus is in power, we have to check that very carefully, so I'll post it there, Oh, bala na kayo mag-decide that. Kaya na lang sa akin, mga kameta. I'm always saying, this is not about taking sides. This is about being true to facts. Kasama dyan sa facts yung kakulangan ng mga liberals, kakulangan ng post-Marcos regimes to bring about inclusive development. Lahat ng mga kapalpakan nangyari uh, since 1986, even yan. Pero that doesn't mean, yun nga yun yung hindi ko na-gets eh. Yung kapalpakan ng mga administration since 1986, not at the same level, there's like, Le- air up level and then there's like Ramos level very different kinds of president Aquino hindi corrupt medyo matino yung management of economy may mga kakulangan here and there sure but the same not the same level as Tatay Digong but but that shouldn't mean kalimutan natin yung nangyari nung panahon ng martial law yun nga yun yung yun yung problema yung binary tayo mag-isip parang bata mag-isip parang if this is bad then this is good if this is bad then that is good That's an immature way of thinking. That hindi yan na malalim na pag-iisip. No? So, so, yun yung medyo unfortunate sa atin na people think in binary terms. For me, what you have to, the way to approach it is, is to look at it at levels, magnitude, degrees. No? Itong presidente, 3 out of 10. Itong presidente, siguro 6 out of 10. Itong presidente, 9 out of 10. Right? Hindi yung itong presidente ay 10, itong presidente ay 0. Or, ito ang 10, then therefore itong 0. Yun ang isip bata. Isip bata yan kung ganyan ka mag-isip. Alright? So, uh, may mga natuwa dyan na biglang bakit par- parang hindi man, hindi man lang na-mention it's a people power revolution anniversary regardless of the day. But, 
I think that's the problem. Your frustration ng mga tao doon sa kakulangan ng mga administration sa mga kasalukuyan ng mga taon ay dahil dyan, medyo nabubulag ang mga tao doon sa mga maling nangyari even before that. And as I said, if you know anything about path dependency, you know that shortcomings in, uh, in, in, in the 70s and 80s laid down the foundations for the weak state institutions, for the corruption, death, and everything we have. In the same way, dito sa bansa na mayroon tayo ngayon, Singapore, dahil good leaders sila nung 60s, 70s, and 80s, under Lee Kuan Yew, tignan mga ganda ng bansa nila ngayon. Very progressive country because the foundations were strong. 60s, 70s, 80s pa lang. Tayo, baliktad. Right? At hanggang ngayon, inaayos pa natin. Hanggang ngayon, we're still dealing with the momentum of the debt and damages to our institutions. Now, that doesn't mean na we'll give a free pass doon sa mga kasalukuyan na administration, yung mga bara-bara style na tatay. No, no. But you put things into proper perspective and you can level, level, level. Alright? Okay, may isang troll na naman dyan si Roy. Obvious na hindi ka nag-isip or siguro ano ka, troll ka nga. <laughs> anyway, now, balikan natin yung isa pang issue. Ito po yung issue ni Brownlee failing yung drug test dun sa Asia Games. Ang masasabi ko lang dito ay, oh my goodness. <laughs> now, mukhang the good news is, mga kameta, mukhang the good news is, mga kameta, we will, we're gonna retain our, we're gonna retain our gold, but... I don't know. Oh, by the way, before that, before I go to Gilas, there's another up development also. So, puro confidential funds pala tayo. Confidential fund tayo, confidential fund, confidential fund. But one thing that we have to keep in mind is yung Maharlika fund po ay dapat titignan pa rin natin. Dapat scrutinize natin at tignan natin na mabuti, no? Anong nangyari dito sa, sa Maharlika fund? So, remember, yung sa unang version ng Maharlika fund, ang pinupush ng administration uh, was to include yung mga SSS fund, GSI, etc. Now, dahil sa galit ng mga tao, dahil sa mga uh, kritisismo ng tao, uh, dahil sa mga anong ginawa yung mga dami ng bash kay Stella, ay Stella, Stella Kimbo, among others, nagkaroon ng a bit of changes, no? Dun sa strategy ng uh, administration. So eventually, I think after multiple revisions, we got a Maharlika fund eventually that is not as problematic and questionable as the first version. Nevertheless, people are still wondering kung itong Marlika fund na meron tayo as it is, itong final version na duman sa uh, bicameral scrutiny na, na cleared by both the upper house and lower house, but not supported by Riza Hontiveros, for instance, so one of the few, if not the only, real opposition dyan sa Senate. Um, what about this one? Should we be worried about it? Now, as you know, pag, pag banko ka, to make sure na hindi ka gumagawa ng kalokohan, meaning hindi ka invested, uh, you know, in, remember, yung mga banks, kinukuha yung savings natin, and then they put into investment, and then kikita sila, and then, of course, they're earning out of our money, and then they give us a small interest rate here. So, yung difference nun, nung interest rate na binabayaran nila sa atin, dun sa kinikita nila sa kanilang investments, yun yung kikitayan ng mga banks. Kaya laki ng kita ng mga ibang banks dahil ang baba ng interest rate sa Pilipinas. Eh. At Philippines has super low interest rate. Especially ngayon, mataas pa inflation, ang baba pa rin ng interest rate, no? So, you barely can beat inflation in the Philippines if you're, you you have deposit and savings there. At least in the other countries, medyo nagbabalance out in dalawa. But anyway, so banks earn from the difference between what they earn out of reinvesting or savings and the investment, the interest rates that they pay us. Now, one of the ways to make sure na itong mga banks, hindi nila kukunin yung lahat ng mga savings natin tapos lahat yung ilalagay sa investment, eh paano kung hindi gumaan yung investment? Paano kung pumalpak yung investment? Paano kung may crisis nangyari? So, paano ngayon ibabalik ang bank yung pera dun sa mga tao nag-savings? No? Now, obviously, one way to make sure na yung banks ay hindi maging masyadong reckless at over-invest ng savings natin is to put yung tinatawag na capital requirements. No? Or minimum reserve requirements. Right? Now, ang ibig sabihin nun na is you are making sure that the bank has enough liquidity of its own just in case lang, right? Just in case lang, uh, some of your investments go don't go well or just in case lang may mga uncertainty sa financial markets and people want to withdraw their money, no? So that's why meron kang ilalagay na minimum, uh, you know, you put some minimum requirements dun sa mga capital 
at liquidity na dapat meron ng banks. Gets you niyan? Because otherwise, kung saan pupunta yung issue. Now, the problem is that in, in the mohang clear how the Land Bank of the Philippines can contribute together with DDP. So, ito, Development Bank of the Philippines and Land Bank of the Philippines. Sila na contribute sa Marlika. Ang worry dito, yeah, reserve requirements. Ang worry dito is that they will breach yung mga minimum requirements na kailangan for ensuring their liquidity. No? So, the, two, the country's two major state banks, Land Bank of the Philippines, L, L, and Development Bank of the Philippines, DDP, are left weekend after the Mahalika Investment Fund took 75 billion pesos of their capital to set up the controversial sovereign fund. Now, it seems that the state banks are starting to propose a link to this article and to feel the strain of that lost capital as both Land Bank and Development Bank have requested for, quote, regulatory relief, meaning, you relax mo yung mga capital reserve requirements, all right, from the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. So that means, biglang magkakaroon ng more flexibility, more relaxation, because ang laki ng pera na mawala sa kanila, so they cannot meet yung mga minimum, right, capital adequacy ratio of 10%, right? So Land Bank and DPP are requesting dito sa flexibility. This refers to sa capital na banks are normally keeping on hand to keep the obligations and the, 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 and the debts that they have. Yung katulad na in-explain natin dito. So this is supposed to be a safeguard or protection from bank runs or instances where depositors withdraw too much money at once, right? So in-explain natin yun sa inyo. So you want to make sure the banks are not over-invested elsewhere with our savings or pag umuutang sila, leverage sila, they are in a position to give back our money just in case if significant number of those who have savings with the bank want to take back that money, right? Now, the uh, the capital adequacy ratio is, I think, 10% passes dito sa nakikita natin. And, and there's a possibility na baka hindi nila ma-maintain yan. So the challenges comes at Land Bank and DPP had 50 billion and 25 billion respectively of their capital taken away Jan to fund the Maharlika Investment Corporation. So again, with billions in capital gone, the balance has now radically shifted. So actually, parang laki ng kinikita nila, di ba? Laki ng kinikita nila for quite some time. Actually, LDP and DPP, if you go, you went to land bank, kasi yung baka tulad namin, nagtatrabaho sa, uh, I mean, ako na sa UP, University of the Philippines, no? sa gobyerno yan, di ba? So kung kuha ka ng sahod, you go to the banks like this, di ba? So in fairness, nakita ko, ano ba? Yung mga ganda yung mga banks, to, medyo malinis, maayos, ganun. So mukhang, these banks have been doing pretty decently, especially land bank. But things will be different right now because collectively they're, they're, they have to give up 75 billion pesos ng kanilang capital. So yung 10% threshold, baka medyo mahirapan sila. No? Baka medyo mahirapan sila. So si, si DPP President Michael De Jesus admitted to Rappler that they would, quote, potentially breach yung capital requirements after remitting their contribution to Marilica Investment Corporation. Ayo sa De Jesus, relief is related to the fact that under BSP regulations, our contribution to Marlika must be deducted from the computation of capital. We seek relief that our contribution not be deducted from the capital. So, ooh, that's kind of interesting. In principle, we can provide forbearance, which means we can allow them not to comply for a period of time. This is in principle, this is what's done elsewhere, but they will be expected to comply at some point. Forbearance is always temporary. Ito yung ayon sa BSP Governor Eli Remoluna Jr. So, Baka, temporarily, magbibigyan sila ng regulatory relaxation or relief. Parang, oof. I don't know. So, former BSP Deputy Governor, kilala ko yan, na-meet natin dati, si Diva, Diwa, sorry, not Diva, Diwa, uh, Gin, uh, Ginigondo, sabi niya, medyo alanganin na ito. Kung hindi nila gusto na bumabang kanilang capital adequacy ratio sa level ng requirements ng Banko Central, kinakailangan na huwag na silang magpautang. Right? So, so now because of the adjustments in their capital, this might affect their lending capacity also and their ability to be exposed to investment risk among others. So, I don't know. So, as with any financial institution, Ayon sa Security Bank Chief Economist Dan Roses, if regular relief is granted, these risks don't disappear. They may simply be deferred or mitigated to some extent. Does the need to take proactive steps to rebuild this capital base and ensure long-term sell? Alright, okay. So again, as I can explain natin, pag sinasabi mong, so ang ginagawa ng bank is yung savings natin, nilalagay nila sa investments, nagpapautang sa iba. So ganun, ganun sila kumikita, di ba? 
uh, now na kumunti yung kanilang capital, yung room for error nila, yung room for lending nila outside, yung room nila for for making investments, ay mas significantly diminish. Kasi 75, 75 billion pesos na no. So malaking bagay yan. So let's see. Again, I'm not saying na automatically panic mode tayo, etc. Especially mga katulad namin na nag-work na sa UP or mga government related. Siyempre, sa land bank din po. Buta yung mga kahit malilit na sahod namin, di ba? Um, no, no, that, that doesn't mean that. So let's be clear. Huwag fake news. Huwag kayo mag-panic. Ang ibig sabihin lang yan na yung flexibility at saka room for maneuver of DPP at saka uh, uh, land bank ay medyo bumababa dahil nga sa funds that they have to put in Maharlika Fund. And then let's not forget na itong Maharlika Fund din, we have to see, hopefully, I mean, bilang Pilipina, I wish the best kasi national fund natin ito, di ba? I, I really hope that the investments from Maharlika go somewhere right. Kasi, of course, in worst, worst case scenarios, yung Maharlika Fund may make bad investments and then itong mga land bank of the Philippines, etc., yung ability nila na magpautang doon sa may, pa- may pangangailangan, especially, I don't know, mga magsasaka, etc., or yung ability nila to make potentially, uh, you know, profitable investments for the future of their own institutions and for their ability to continue to lend in a sustainable fashion doon sa mga pangangailangan, baka makompromise din yan. So, we hope that doesn't happen. I mean, we hope that land, land bank and DBP will be able to uh, you know, even out whatever temporary adjustments and shocks that they 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 they're gonna absorb, and that any adjustment to the regulatory requir- requirements will not create perverse uh, moral hazard, for instance, or kind of a perverse situation whereby major maging risky na no. As much as possible, we want all our banks to comply to the minimum capital ratio requirements, and that's ten percent, right? So maybe there'll be adjustment in there, but I hope this will not be a long term so that we don't incentivize questionable co- capital and liquidity practices, right? By 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 banks, no, any kind of banks. And at the same time, hoping Marlika Fund will really make great, great investments because Anjan na tayo, Anjan na, tapos na yun, right? So yes, we talk a lot about confidential funds. We talk a lot about transparency, accountability, but there's another big fund, the Marlika Investment Corporation Fund. It doesn't belong to the president or anyone. But, again, my interest is to make sure that it makes good investments and my interest is in to make sure that LDP and DPP, uh, LDP, Land Bank of the Philippines and the Development Bank of the Philippines are operating on more or less safe margins, right? Because mahalaga din itong mga banks na to in terms of lending dun sa mga tao na may pangangailangan, di ba? Need to loan out money so that they can, I don't know, invest in their farm, etc. So, let's see. Let's follow this very closely. So, Si mga kameta, kung titingnan nyo, we are carefully watching everything. So it's not like we choose one side over the other side. Hindi tayo nung ganun mag-isip. We look at levels, we look at opportunity spaces, but we also have to make sure kahit sino na sa gobyerno, right? Had Lenny been in the government, I would have still scrutinized her. Exactly the same. Except, I'm sure with Lenny, you know, she knows her stuff. And alam naman, malinis sa tao yan, so... And I, I doubt that Leonard Robredo would have pushed for a Marley Cup sovereign fund or anything like that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure she would have rather focused on making sure itong mga institution na meron tayo who are doing well, like LDP, uh, Land Bank and DBP, would be helping yung mga, I don't know, mga magsasaka, yung mga small-time entrepreneurs, people who really need it, rather than making another additional fund. But anyways, andito na tayo. So let's see. Hopefully, Marley Cup fund will work. But we have to scrutinize, look at it. Now, we're done with that part. You know, just a reminder to people na binabantayan din natin lahat ng nangyari, kahit anong side yan, anong panig yan. Uh, wala tayong kinikilingan in that sense. Now, hindi ko na kasalanan kung mas palpak yung bara-bara style si Tatay Digong kaysa kay ganito. Hindi ko na kasalanan yan for pointing out facts. Facts are not my fault. Alright? I'm just saying it. So, pag sinasabi hindi kinikilingan, walang kinikilingan, ibig, hindi ibig sabihin na magbulag-bulagan tayo sa mga bara-bara at kapalpakan. That's not what it means. Okay? Now, Mag, medyo mag-facepalm moment tayo kasi itong ganito kasi mga kameta. Remember, nung nanalo tayo ng Asian gold for the first time in 61 years, ang sinabi po natin noon is, wow, big, big. But at the same time, let's be honest, medyo swerte din tayo in the sense that yung Korea, yung Japan, yung Lebanon, yung mga ibang powerhouses, arguably we're not there in the 100 
person mode. And then, you know, countries like Iran obviously are going to transitions. China also didn't have one of their own, not naturalized pair, but one of their own superstars. And then we aged out both Iran and China by only one point. Although the Jordan game was really good. I was very impressed. I think the Jordan game in the finals made me feel, yes, we are a kind of a gold, true gold medalist. But the thing is this, eh? There was already a conversation that the Philippine gold was under semi-special circumstances. Ngayon, yeah, I agree ako. Di rin tayo 100% kasi wala rin si Clarkson. Eh? But I'm just saying, uh, I'm just saying, di ba, yung team ng Korea, Japan, at saka yung Lebanon, hindi rin, yung Lebanon yata, hindi nag-participate at all, di ba? So, I don't know. I'm just saying, di ba? Yung Japan naman, napaka-strong. So, I have to double-check, you know? Ano nangyari sa Japan dun sa Asian Games? Eh, Nakailan panalo sila? Tatlong panalo sila sa FIBA World Cup, di ba? So, I'm just saying, hindi ko kanyang question yung panalo natin. Eh. Especially nung after nanalo tayo sa Jordan, super confident ako sa Pilipinas. Ang tuwan-tuwa ako. But my, my point is, yung mga haters, yung mga critics, at alam niyo na kung sino, yung, yung isang host dyan, parang bitter sila sa panalo ng Pilipinas. Hindi lang sa kanila nung semifinals, pero dun sa pinaka-finals at saka gold medal natin. Now, Ang problema is eto, nag-positive drug test pa yung hindi lang isa sa mga Kilas players natin. Arguably, the man who made the most difference. Not in all games, 